we were in quarantine, basically, we we're in a bubble, uh, and all the cast members lived together in the same house, in, the right. same, in this giant 60,000 square foot mansion. And so a lot of stuff went on. <laughs> we, ate, <laughs> we ate dinner together every night, man. Yeah. You know? And uh, and uh, and 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 J Lo and 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 Josh Duhamel had com- had uh, other mansions right next to this other one, and like because right. they couldn't you know stay with us in the sixty thousand square foot <laughs> mansion. You star in the film Champions, which will be available on digital on April twenty eighth and on Blu ray on DVD on May second. I got a chance to see the film. I enjoyed it, um, but oh, yeah, of course. So. But for those who haven't watched it yet, what can they expect when they watch this film? Uh, a surprise. Yeah, you can expect surprise if, if that's a, if that's a contradiction in terms that that happens in this movie. You know, they I I would ask the same questions. I think that all people would when they hear about this film. Well, can they pull this off? And we're gonna can these kids play ball? Is there can they act? Can they do all the things you're supposed to do in this movie? And it was a resounding yes. And it's it's amazing. And then and the just to watch them uh function in their world and you're being brought into their world instead of them coming into your world, you know, it's uh, that it is it's it was it was a, a eye opening experience and a really great experience, you know, to see everything these kids could do. They're not just defined by one aspect of their personality and you play julio who's the rec manager of that yeah. center and but ultimately what drew you to the film was it the character was it the cast was it working with director bobby fairly what drew you to the film champions uh- uh, every all the above, but yeah. mostly uh, Woody was a buddy. You know, we we'd worked together before. We did a play together in San Francisco, and like every night, and so we had a lot of fun. And then Bobby Fairley, I'm a big fan of the Fairley Brothers movies. Man, they cracked me up. And yeah. uh, so, hey, this is going to be fun. And of course, who who doesn't want to be in Winnipeg in the winter? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that that sounds amazing. But it's funny that you mentioned Woody Harrelson because I didn't even realize that this is the first. Uh, time you work together in a full length feature film. And yeah, yeah, I realized, and I just read about it yesterday. You worked in a play a while back, but are you kind of surprised that this is the first time you two are working together in a movie like this? uh, Since you two have been working uh, for so long. Yeah, uh, you fit, uh, the, the odds are that you're going to work yeah. with him somewhere along the yeah. line, you know, mathematically impossible not to. Uh, so, you know, but, but Woody and I got along well. I know him from Hawaii. He has a bunch of friends that we're, we're having in common. And I thought this this is going to be fun. If Woody's playing this character, it's going to be fun. And and I'd never worked with Bobby uh, before, so uh, but I loved his movies. So I, it can only be good. And then, and all these kids playing that, and I was just blown away by the, the, these kids. I mean, that, the, their ability to do a lot of other things. Yeah. You know, one kid spoke seven languages, mm-hmm. you know, and they were all great dancers and, and, and yeah. other kind of athletes. It was, it was amazing to watch it, you know, because you'd watch them practicing their little dance moves you know, in, in, on the breaks and like where some of them had physical disabilities, uh, they overcame them when they're concentrating on dancing. And I just, every day I would come and watch that. It was astounding. You know? And they took direct direction exceedingly well. Yeah, I enjoyed watching them. It was really fun to see all of them. Um, they all had different personalities that brought something different to the table. And along with the athletes and Woody Harrelson and yourself, Caitlin Olsen also stars. And I really enjoyed her, her work in, in the film as well. So um, what was it like having her on set? Oh, she was great, man. I'd, I'd never met her before. And I, yeah. I don't think I'd ever watched this in uh, Philadelphia. So uh, and so we, we kind of had a lot of conversations. The other aspect is he has, she has this romance with Woody, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because she's the sister of one of the kids that plays ball, and and it's a it's a really real romance that that gets stronger as it goes along and it faces all the things, it's ups and downs, and I, I hate you, I love you, you know, kind of that deal. And and I thought it it was this other chord that came into the movie. It was just, just like this glue that brought everything together, you know. And it was it, and it really made it a well rounded movie. You're just not watching the same, well I hope they win kind of thing. Uh, but you're following these other characters and it was really cool. You know? It was interesting. 
And obviously with champions, it focuses on uh, basketball in the Special Olympics, as well as a little bit of semi-pro level basketball. So how would you rate your basketball skills? I was a pretty good basketball player for a yeah. midget. You know? <laughs> 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 I was I was always the littlest good, you know, they used to call me Wilt the Stump. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I was I was a good ball handler, good part, you yeah. know, a guard, a point guard fast. They couldn't stop me, but you know, they could tower over me. But I loved right. loved basketball, loved played it every day. Of course. And you know, after working on a film like Champions. What was the best thing about working on this movie? Uh, well, all the scenes that we shot indoors. Yeah. I understand that. <laughs> if we had to shoot a, a scene outdoors in Winnipeg in December, let's let's get this in one take, you know, <laughs> because it was freezing there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see that. But when you look at your career, you have been in your share of films that kind of have a sports theme, whether it's Tin Cup, The Great White Hype, or even The Perfect Game. So um, do you like, yeah, do you like working on films that kind of have like uh, sports as a central focus? And would you like to work on more sports films down the road? Sure, absolutely. I like working because you know you know the narrative. It's somebody's they're striving to win, you know, and or learn something or learn something physical, and it kind of always going towards a directed goal to win the golf game or the basketball game or the whatever is at the end. So you know that anything you do that can aid the. Uh, uh, the, the eventual outcome of that in a good way, uh, it, it's a, it's an easy thing to follow, you know. So I was I knew how to do that, and I was I played sports all my life, right? All, all kinds of sports. I played basketball, baseball, football, ran track, uh, you know, and so it was part of my DNA. So I really identified with it, even though I'm not playing in any of them. What was your favorite sport growing up? Baseball. Oh, really? Yeah, baseball. Played baseball every day from. And then, and then I was I was good in high school, and, and I and I didn't get a scholarship to, to go to college. And like, yeah. all right, later for baseball. I hate you. <laughs> never <laughs> play baseball again. <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't ever play baseball again. Mm. I was heartbroken. You know, I was going to be the new LB Pearson. I don't know if you knew he's he's he was the littlest guy in the majors. He played mm. for the Angels, and okay. he was a great player. He was a center fielder. You know, and and he and he was my hero uh, for for little guys, you know, but uh, uh, I knew I had no chance in basketball, but I but I had a chance in baseball. Yeah, absolutely. And um, along with your work on Champions, you previously started in the film Shotgun Wedding that was on Prime Video with Jennifer Lopez. You know, after mm -hmm. working on that film, um, what was the one thing that stood out with Jennifer when you were working with her? Uh, how professional she was. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of things that went on in that movie. We shot it during COVID. And so uh, uh, we were in the Dominican Republic to shoot the whole movie. Mm -hmm. And we were in quarantine. Basically, we we're in a bubble uh, and all the cast members lived together in the same house in, the right. same, in this giant 60,000 square foot mansion. And so a lot of stuff went on. <laughs> we, ate, we ate dinner <laughs> together every night, man. Yeah. You know? And uh, and uh, and 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 J Lo and and, and Josh Duhamel had com had a, uh, other mansions right next to this other one, and like because right. they couldn't you know stay with us in the sixty thousand square foot mansion. <laughs> we had oh, a great not. time. We had a, it was like yeah, we had a, it was astounding, and and the things that we shared uh, working together at the cast. But uh, on a professional level, J Lo had to, had she had to replace the the leading man at the last minute, mm -hmm. and okay, she jumped into her producer on put on a producer hat and went to work. Found Josh Duhamel couldn't have picked a better person and i think that you know was that it, it was supposed to happen i guess that's my only explanation for it but she was very professional very nice you know had no time for bull mm -hmm. which was good Absolutely. because you know movies can limp along during the yeah. production but there was no time to limp here uh, yeah, absolutely. And the last question for me before I let you go is you put, obviously put together a strong career, have no signs of slowing down, but what's next for you? Do you have any projects that uh, coming up that you can talk about? Yeah, I'm just about to start a movie. Okay. Uh, with I'm trying to figure out the name of it now. It, it, 
it's it's a uh, uh I kind of what's it? It's, it's every not, it's, it's not everything everywhere all the time, but the the good the the bad even worse day or something. It's a okay. it's a not a remake but a sequel to. Uh, 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 it's, it's a great cast. Uh, Eva Longoria is in it, and and I I I once again play some beautiful woman's father, and uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> and we're, we're just going to start shooting it uh, in the next couple of days in in New Mexico in Albuquerque. So I'm getting ready to go do that, and then uh, I might do another one right after that. So. Uh, I want. I want to go sleep. Oh yeah, <laughs> I want to go to the desert. My desert house. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Well, Chief, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it, and thank continued success much. to you, man. I I really do appreciate it. You star in the film Champions, which is going to be released on digital on April 28th and on Blu-ray and DVD on May 2nd. For you, how was the experience being on this film and working on this film? Well, you know, I've done a lot of work over the last 50 plus years. Yeah. And um, Woody Harrelson and I, we did a movie called The Cowboy Way about 30 years ago. Uh, Bobby Farrelly, I, I hadn't worked with, but I, I love his work. And yeah. um, But when I read the script, you know, about, you know, special needs um, uh, team of players. Uh, it was really exciting because I felt that that community has been so underrepresented in, in film um, and TV. And... Um, even I think in society in general, um, I remember I did a movie uh, back in the uh, 90s, early 90s, called The Hand of the Rocks to the Cradle, and I played a mentally disabled uh, character. But as I was trying to research the character, I found that there were a lot of people, the people I knew, who had uh, children who um, had disabilities and they had either put in a home or they just didn't talk about. You know, it was like you just sort of, didn't mention that. And so now it was wonderful to read a script um, that just really represented that community in a way that uh, I thought um, was accessible and people could get. So that was the most exciting thing for me. Uh, I knew Bobby uh, is known for creating a, a great environment for actors to sort of create an in. And, uh, but I think meeting uh, some of the young people uh, and uh, seeing them sort of come together and and uh, and really yeah, just give these wonderful performances, that was really exciting for me. You mentioned that you worked with Woody Harrelson before. How was it working with him again? Yeah, I, I, Woody is one of those guys. It's very hard for, for me to imagine anybody not liking Woody. You know, yeah. he um, he's just a, a really great guy, but he's really uniquely individual. I mean, he's, he's definitely Woody, but. But he just has a great spirit, and um, even watching him connect with the, uh, uh, you know, the disabled uh, people in the film, uh, because you know when uh, the director would say cut, unlike a lot of actors, he didn't just retreat to his trailer. He would actually spend time hanging out with them. Really got to know um, the everyone really well, and I felt that it was that sort of uh, interaction and acceptance that made. Um, everybody feel like they were a part of the team and uh, and just took that edge away. So they, the performances are really, truly amazing. And in the film, you play Phil, who's the coach of the semi-pro team, and also Marcus's friend, who's played by Woody Harrelson. Um, I read that you're not a big sports fan. So when you're working on a film like this, where you're a coach and um, you're coaching basketball, do you have a right. newfound respect for the sport as well as coaching in general? Well, I have a, a, a well, it's not a newfound respect. I've always had oh, a lot yeah. of respect for, right. you know, for, for sports. I mean, I'm amazed at, uh, you know, uh, athleticism, what people are able to do with their bodies. And, uh, I mean, the precision that it requires. Uh, there are people uh, who are truly, truly gifted. Uh, as a kid, I was very good in uh, athletics. Uh, but I never felt that it was a place for me, only because I, 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 I felt that, the people who try to encourage me to participate uh, was interested in me because I was black. That's how it felt to me. Now I I'm older now and realize it, it was more to it than that. But um, I just felt because you know I'm black and the school <clears throat> system that I, I was in, which is in Michigan, um, they made a deliberate attempt to separate 
um, the the black kids uh, and did not involve us in a lot of things except for sports. Mm -hmm. And so that it, it was just very personal to me. Now I realize it, it would have been a lot of fun, but but I really um, admire that. And also coaches, not just for the ability to sort of coach a team to success or whatever, but um, the ability to to be with a group of people and commit uh, and to see them through. So it's, it's not just the coaching, but um, mentoring and uh, just nurturing and all that it takes to to build a, a team of competent people to succeed. So, yeah, I, I really respect that. I just not a part of a community that I you know know a lot about. Yeah. Uh, and of course, when, as you're acting, you want to create that world. So, you know, there are people who, you know, who are there who know that. Uh, but I think it would have been much more effective probably had I played basketball, which I, I mean, I played, yeah. you know, in high school, but never really seriously. Of course. And I think one of the things that impressed me with this movie is uh, how how the kids played on the court and as well as they uh, performed on screen. So how much did you enjoy seeing those kids in action? It was great. I mean, I um, I can't say I was surprised. Right. But uh, I was really um it was great to see them and I see them seize this opportunity that I know probably hasn't come along very often for a lot of these uh, young people. And, um, you know, and, and I think they showed that there's something in, uh, about, uh, I don't know, I want to say our species, uh, certainly in our society, that uh, we seem to believe that unless you present a certain way, that uh, your life doesn't have value. You know what I mean? You have to be like everyone else in order to, have a decent life and that simply isn't true you know we're all uniquely different um and i think in this film you i mean the, the laughter the camaraderie um just the love and respect and, and and the capabilities are displayed and i think it might come as a surprise to uh, to certain people but life doesn't um you know we we we, we try to say this is life and that's but truth of matters life is i, I played a homeless guy in a movie years ago called Everything is Jake, and it was about a man who had been homeless almost since he was, you know, childhood. But there is, life still goes on, you know. It just might not be in the way that we think it it, it should be. But but uh, but these kids certainly, I say kids, I, I apologize. In, in my age, everybody's a kid, you know. But these young people <laughs> certainly showed uh, that they're more than capable. And I hope it opens the door. Uh, to more um, acting opportunities and more opportunities to to participate in the um, film and television industry. Of course. And and Champions is an underdog story, which makes it very, very relatable. Um, when you talk about your career in Hollywood, did you ever feel um, like you were an underdog at one point? Well, it's kind of a mixture. Of, um, um, yeah, there's always a feeling of, you know, being a bit of an underdog. But on the other hand, uh, I was taught that I was very special. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people might say, why? Uh, I have no idea why my grandmother, my, I, I didn't have either parent, so my grandmother raised me, but I've always felt that, yeah, I was, I was special and I deserved just wonderful things. And uh, that's, uh, even though life sometimes presented differently or might have looked differently to uh, certain people, but I've always felt that no, man, I'm you know my life is, <laughs> you know, I, it's I, life is good, you know, and uh, even I was a single dad, and sure there was struggles, but I, it never felt to me uh, that um, you know that I didn't deserve the best of uh, that the, the the universe life is not uh, belong to a certain group, you know, or that uh, we should be. They're not entitled to to all the richness of life. You know, we I think sometimes, you know, I feel people get caught up into believing you have to have certain economic um, you know, wealth or conditions in order to be happy. And that simply is not true. So um so being an underdog, I never felt I never felt whatever disadvantage is. I never yeah. felt that way. But I also know that uh, society is is uh, set up in a way to try and convince me that I somehow deserve less or that uh, I'm somehow less capable or whatever. None of it ever made any sense to me. I'm like, you know, this is, you know, this is a, a great journey. It's between me and God and, uh, 
and the rest of us, we're just here to, to have fun, you know? Okay. So I don't know if that answers the question, but no, yeah. I, I never really, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. then sometimes they'll even come and they'll say, wow, you know, you're making this and the other person is making that. So don't you feel, I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> I, I got what I need. So yeah. I'm, I'm good. Absolutely. And uh, along with your work in Champions, you currently star in the NBC series Quantum Leap. Now, I remember watching Quantum Leap in the 1990s with Scott Bakula. Uh, so how does this version stand out from that uh, 1990s version? Well, this is Quantum Leap, um, you know, 30 years into the future, which is really what it has been. It's been a, yeah. a good 30 years now. And um, um, Raymond Lee, who plays Dr. Ben Song, is the, the leaper. Um, yeah. the role that Scott Bakula played. What makes this uh, iteration different is uh, we, uh, in, in the old show, you saw uh, the leap and then he had a hologram uh, that was um, played, by, played by Dean Stockwell yeah. uh, who would be with him. And so every episode that we're leaping from, from person to person. This is about the, um, the uh, Ziggy, the, uh, the computer, and also the team that runs that. And so you get both, you get the leap, but you also get what's happening current day. The first season was mostly about the leaps, but now we're in our second season and now we, we begin to discover who these people are. Mm -hmm. I play a character who had been leaped into in the original series, um, who after having that experience, uh, got the Navy and the Pentagon to fund and open up the project that had been shut down. And so it's really, really, uh, the writing is amazing. It's a great cast. And I'm, I'm just loving working on it. We're in our second season now. I think it's um, I think it's doing well. It's always hard to know where the numbers are and all yeah. that. But but I encounter people on the street who love the show. And I'm, I really love working on it. And another successful show you're on is the BET Plus series, The Family Business. I know that season four just wrapped up. Will there be a season five? I hope so. You know, they're talking about it. Carl Weber, who created... Um, and writes um, uh, just for all the episodes. Um, um, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I'm one of the uh, producers on the show and, um, you know, it plays to an audience that, um, that the studios seem to think I don't, um, you know, I haven't done a lot of movies directed toward certainly the urban black audience. And this is a show that does, but I, I just love working. It's a great cast. Um, some of the story, it's a different kind of story than say a quantum leap or a ghostbuster. And I like the, the fact that it's, it's, it's different. Um, but I, yeah, I hope there's a season five, but they're talking about it. And, um, you know, when there's money um, on the table, then, <laughs> and then I know they're serious until yeah. then it's a lot of talk, but I think there'll be, uh, I think the fans have been open to it. And uh, I know the other actors want it to happen. So I, I hope so. Yeah, let's definitely hope so. And when it comes to movies, um, you are starring in The Retirement Plan, which has yeah. a really talented cast with Nicolas Cage, Ron Perlman, Ashley Green, just to name a few. Um, what can you tell us about that film? It's a great film. Nicolas Cage, I, I, I've always been a fan of his work. Yeah. Uh, kind of like we talked about Woody Harrelson. Uh, Nicholas is just one of those guys started out very young and he um, he's, just, he's just great. And he really fully embraces all of the work that he does. Um, I've been a fan of his and uh, the movie um, is just a real fun action adventure. At this stage in my life, uh, like I said, I've been doing this for over 50 years and um, it's nice to have a good action uh, movie where I get to be involved in the action. So, um, so it's, yeah, it, it's, um, it's, it's a great fun, good cast. And uh, I'm, I haven't seen, the finished product, but I know yeah. what should be coming. So, yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to that. And the last question for me before I let you go is, um, and most people know you from what you're working Ghostbusters, you were in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, I really enjoyed that. And I know there's going to be a sequel. Um, what can you tease about this movie? Um, what can you say about it, if anything? Well, you know, at the very end, uh, I don't know if you stayed for the end credits, but Winston, um, yeah. Uh, where he's a billionaire now he's done very well in life and so he's but he's always enjoyed that part the whole ghost busting thing so he's taken um his part of his fortune and um and brought um, a whole different level to the ghostbusters and so the new movie um sort of deals with that and uh and as we move 
into the future of, of uh, busting goals. But Winston is um, um, is a fun character. Play. I'm so glad to see that arch. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's just it's a like all the Ghostbusters. It's a really fun ride. And um, and I and what I love about Ghostbusters, it's uh, you know old people, young people. It just has a great audience, great fan base all over the world. And uh, I think they'll be really pleasantly surprised uh, with this new movie. Um, so yeah, it's good. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to all your other projects. Uh, Ernie, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on everything and continued success to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time and yeah, continued success to you too, man. Stay uh, thank up. you so much. Absolutely. <laughs>